Hi, I'm David Cowan, partner of Bessemer Venture Partners and Deep Tech Fanatic. And I'm here in Toronto, Canada to explore what's shaping up to be the most important scientific invention of the 21st century, quantum computing. Quantum computing upends the fundamental principles of computer science. Normal computers operate on bits. Electrical flows through a transistor with a high charge or a low charge, representing one or zero. And so quantum computers isolate particles from the rest of the universe for a very brief period of time. These qubits represent both zero and one at the same time. And so quantum computers process both input values simultaneously. This may not sound like much of a gain, but when you entangle 50 of these qubits together, your computer is now operating on two to the 50 different values, speeding up the process a quadrillion times. Some of the advances we can expect are longer lasting batteries, accurate climate models, cancer treatments and other drugs. So the race is on to commercialize quantum technology with the biggest advancements coming in the number, stability and accuracy of qubits. There are several companies with working quantum computers, but special congratulations go to SciQuantum and Xanadu two companies who made this year's list of the world's top 100 private deep tech companies. Today I'm going to talk with an XB100 honoree, Christian Weedbrook, CEO and founder of Xanadu. Xanadu is a quantum computer company that isolates photons or light particles. Let's find out what inspired Christian to found this company and why he thinks quantum computing will change the world. Christian, what inspired you to start Xanadu? That's a good question, and, and uh, really, I've lived my life by wake, wanting to wake up each day and work on something that I love, and also something that's useful and has impact. And I think a lot of us here at Xanadu feels the same way. We ultimately originally came from academia, where we were working on quantum computing, but in the, in the mindset of sort of research and publishing papers. And we thought it would be amazing if we can actually commercialize quantum computing, take it out of the lab, take it out of academia, and really create something that's truly useful, not just for academics, but actually for society. And that's really the, the grand prom promise of, of quantum computing, which we're excited about. What is the greatest technical challenge of this endeavor and how far along are you in overcoming it? In one word, loss. Now, loss affects us humans and it also affects technology. When we're talking over the internet, FaceTime or, or whatnot, it actually involves lasers underneath our cities and fiber optics. Now light, even if it's not quantum, but say classical, meaning what we use today for, for the internet, you lose photons, you lose, you lose light. So it gets absorbed in the fiber or it gets uh, reflected and so forth. That also happens on a computer where the chips are the size of our thumbnails. And so even off millimeters or centimeters, loss is a big killer. So basically what happens is you've got information encoded in light. And even if it travels a few centimeters, you'll lose some photons. So we need to protect against that. And uh, broadly speaking, other companies are solving this like us using error correction and fault tolerance. So essentially you can um, embed uh, more information to a smaller subset that allows you to actually protect against errors and then hopefully build one of these quantum computers. So it's a very difficult challenge, but we have uh, remedies for loss. Was there a moment in the years leading up to now that really stood out as a eureka moment, if you will, a time where you solved a problem that you've been working on that gave you hope and inspiration that Xanadu is going to prevail here? From a scientific point of view, the Eureka moment was very clear for us. Uh, Xanadu uh, last year achieved quantum supremacy or quantum computational advantage, as it's also known. It's only the third time that's been demonstrated, first by a startup and first time in Canada. So the team was extremely proud on that. Um, it was actually started during COVID, so the hardware team was able to still achieve this during COVID, which is remarkable. And then the actual idea of actually achieving uh, quantum supremacy is huge. So quantum supremacy is the point where for a well-defined problem, we actually show that you can actually outperform a supercomputer, a classical computer uh, using a quantum computer. And to give you an idea of this, uh, it's, it, for us, it's, it took for this particular problem less than a second and would have taken 9,000 years for a classical supercomputer to do that. So the team was thrilled. It, it, made, it was peer reviewed in wow. nature. And it's the first time we put this on the Xanadu cloud. And it's the first time anywhere in the world that anyone with internet connection can actually play around with a device that now it's more powerful than a, a supercomputer. Congratulations. Thank that you. That is awesome. The team is wonderful. <laughs> As you think about the future, what will be the most important impact that quantum computers will have? 
For us at Xanadu, we truly believe in the area of uh, the vertical of quantum chemistry. Uh, we believe that it will have uh, one of the largest impacts in society, but also is the lowest hanging fruit in terms of, you know, when you start building a fault tolerant quantum computer. So for us specifically, we're focusing on next generation battery development. It's a, it's a subset of material design and quantum chem chemistry. And uh, we believe that, you know, you can create using quantum computers in the future, uh, batteries that can actually, you know, be 10 times safer, 10 times faster, and 10 times more charge and so forth. Uh, so that's a real focus for us. So it sounds like quantum computing can be an important factor in fighting climate change and facing the environmental peril that we face on the planet. That's right, and batteries is a good example of that in terms of sustainability and electric vehicles and so forth. Uh, the promise of quantum computing is, is really unlimited in some sense. Having said that, it's unclear exactly where it'll, it'll help in, in a lot of cases, but there's a strong belief that it's important to build this new type of computer. And we always have this phrase that the world will always need faster computers. It's unlikely to sort of plateau out and consumers will say, we don't want faster computers. And quantum computing is the next step in that. Christian, what's the most tangible way in which quantum computers will touch the lives of people 20 years from now. Drug discovery, that's another hope for quantum computing over the next coming decades as well. So drugs, instead of taking, uh, at least for the computational initial stage, taking years to do, we can do it in a few minutes or a few weeks. And that's the promise that hopefully will touch everyone's lives in a few decades.